Uh, it should be it should be just 50 50 i think i think it's just that we've had so many years of little boys or men being the heroes of movies that we nearly need the same number of years with female Mm -hmm. protagonists before it would be hi tom hi ross thank you so much for your time it's a pleasure to be talking to you both and and how you guys doing today (laughs) <laughs> it's okay, by. a bit cold. <laughs> Ross is cold. He wishes he's California dreaming there. Yeah. In the studio. If I think of a warm place, LA, maybe like, I'll, yeah. maybe it'll keep me warm. Yeah. Uh, I just want to salute you both for this amazing, gorgeous animation. And I, I was like blown away of everything. The story, the details and everything is so beautiful and can we start telling me a little bit about the inspiration of this story this time around and it's a mix of like we have like medieval look like a medieval times there's some irish in the middle can we can start with you tom (laughs) yeah it is it's an interesting time in irish history and it's based in the town that ross and i are from kilkenny it's where our studio is here in ireland and it was a time when Oliver Cromwell, the Lord Protector from England, came over to try and conquer Ireland. And, you know, he wiped out the wolves or tried to wipe out the wolves. And he tried to kind of show that he could tame the Irish people by doing this. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting time period. It has a lot of parallels to modern history and has there's a lot of ripples from that period into, into modern times. And, uh, yeah, the inspiration then was to, we thought about that time period and we thought about how divisive and how, difficult the time it was but also that there was folklore that around that time that said that people from Kilkenny here could turn into wolves or could leave their bodies at wolves as wolves and thought that was really interesting that if we imagined that if there was a little girl that came over with her dad to hunt the wolves and she made friends with a little Irish girl and the little Irish girl not only was from the other tribe as it were but also was one of the wolves that her dad was hunting that was sort of the the core of a story for us or the inspiration that there's the seed that we kind of kept on developing as we shaped up the script, you know? Yeah. And it, it's, it's amazing. And Ross, can you tell me a little bit about like the mix that you guys have with like hand drawing and uh, I don't know, I don't think you use too much CGI. Can you tell me a little bit of how did you approach that? Well, Cartoon Saloon is, is very much a hand-drawn studio. I mean, nearly everything that we do here is is hand-drawn. Um, and especially on Wolfwalkers, we wanted to make it really an example of, of the best hand-drawn that we can do. Um, so all of the all of the backgrounds are all done on paper, painted on paper and hand-drawn and hand-inked. And all of the animation is hand-drawn, but into a Cintiq, into a tablet. Um, the effects are hand drawn. Everything, as much as possible, is done on paper or done at least with a pencil or stylus. And um, and then our inspiration obviously comes from graphic novels and comic books and artwork and everything like that. So really, we wanted to make it uh, very much a visual high point. Um, the only the one part that we did err from that and go away was in the wolf vision um, scenes where Robin sees out, sees out through the eyes of of herself as a wolf and. Uh, to to make that immersive world and the camera view like you know flowing through um, uh, wooded backgrounds and town backgrounds, um, we used VR um, uh, software. So the, the we worked with this guy Evan McNamara, who's an animation director, and he he had like the VR goggles on and he was sculpting these trees in VR software, and then every frame of that was printed out and um, and rendered on paper with pencil and charcoal. So it went from CG back to hand drawn. Wow. Wow. It's amazing. It's amazing. Like it's, it's beautiful as I, as I said before. And also I, 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 I like it a lot because you have like the two girls that, why did you guys decide to have, instead of like be a boy and a girl or like two, two boys or why did you decide mm-hmm. to have two girls? Early on, it was a little boy for Robin. We thought Robin could be a little boy, but the story just didn't make sense like that. It made much more sense as a little girl because in that society, a little girl wouldn't be expected to uh, do anything except be uh, like a housemaid, you know, like she could either be a housemaid or a witch, really. She didn't have much options, you know, and uh, and that kind of repression from society was something we wanted to speak to. 
And so that seemed, and it still obviously has so many parallels today um, for women. Um, in lots of places in the world, they don't have the freedom to have to make the choices a little boy would make. And in the relationship between Robin and Maeve, we always felt kind of symbolized, um, you know, that first friendship you make with somebody, then you can see somebody who's just like you, but they have a different life or they come from a different background. So the contrast between Robin and Maeve was really interesting in their friendship. And the fact that we were talking about a kind of patriarchal society that the Puritans represented and Maeve kind of comes from the matriarchal society that was kind of representing an older spirituality that was more mother based rather than kind of father and, and discipline based. So I think it, it just it just made sense that the, the core of the story would be a female core to the story. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully, hopefully we get to a gender balance sometime in the future where the fact that like your main your, your main characters would be a girl or, or a female isn't even an issue, you know. It shouldn't be. Uh, it should be it should be just fifty fifty. I think it, I think it's just that we've had so many years of little boys or men being the heroes of movies that we nearly need the same number of years with female mm-hmm. protagonists before it would yeah. even Yeah. That's right. I think yeah, it's it's amazing. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you so much, Ross, for your time. And it's it's a pleasure to talk to you both. And I think everybody is gonna love the same ways the same way I did. And keep doing it because this is like magic. <laughs> this animation is like magic. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Wolf, wolf, hunting far in yonder. The forest is brimming with wolves. It's my job to hunt them down, not yours. But we could hunt them together. Wolves, bears, dragons even. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of them wolf walkers. Wolf walkers? Wait! The ones that can talk to wolves with some wild magic. You can come out now. We can smell ya, you stick. You're a uh, wolf walker. You're a wolf when you sleep. <gasps> what? A girl when you're awake. <gasps> my Robin! Something's happened to me. Yeah, I can see that. It's flipping great. You're a wolf now. Be a wolf! Are getting smaller every day. These wolves, they're just beasts. Tonight we put an end to this. I promise your mother I'd keep you safe. I have to help her. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, to like and subscribe to our channel right here.